Good evening. Welcome to the May 11th uh, Finance Subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee. Um, <clears throat> due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the Open Meeting Law's requirement that meetings be held in public places open and physically accessible to the public so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 98, and uh, 1071, the HD version. Um, the public can access this meeting via the following link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. Okay. I'll call the roll to establish our quorum. Mayor Sullivan. Here. D'Agostino is here. Ms. Asak. Here. Mrs. Mendez. Here. Mr. Minicello. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Here. Mr. Sullivan. Here. And I know Mr. Rodriguez is with us. He just stepped out briefly. All right. One minute. Okay, so for this evening's finance subcommittee, we have the FY 2022 school department budget followed by other business to come before finance. And with that, oh, right to Aldo. Okay, uh, Mr. Mr. Petronio will give us an update on the budget. And as we discussed, I know that I'm, I'm hearing from people about the Senate numbers coming out. If you can kind of explain the whole part about the cherry sheet and that, sure. that would be great. Yeah, earlier, earlier today, the governor announced, um, well, the State House News announced that the Senate had reached their budget. Um, it is roughly the same amount of money appropriated as the House. They've just shifted funds in different areas slightly. As of right now, you can only see the, the gross dollars for the budget. What happens is the cherry sheet, which breaks out every city and town in the state, has the breakout. It begins with the governor's breakout of funds, then the House break out of funds. The Senate column is not complete yet, so it's not out as of, uh, I just checked at 8.15 this evening. So usually it's l later that evening or the next day that you'll see it, the cherry sheet actually broken out by each and every community in the Commonwealth. At that point, we'll see what our overall funding is, but then um, there'll be a compromise committee. So depending on what the House puts in, I told you the House is a million four higher than the governor's budget. So if the Senate is around that same amount, they'll go to compromise committee and they'll come out with a final budget for us. So that's actually a, a good prelude into my uh, presentation tonight. Um, since our last meeting, I've met with Troy Clarkson, the CFO of the city, um, to go over what numbers we're actually gonna present and, and work off of as our accurate numbers. He asked that he's preparing the, the mayor's budgets using the governor's proposal, the governor's numbers. So in, in doing so, he asked if we would do the same here. Now this year, as you, if you remember, we appropriated off of the estimated amount from the mayor's budget. Then once the, it was late this year, but once the compromise committee finally put out the budget and the governor approved it, we were late into the year, we went back to the mayor and back to the city to receive a supplemental appropriation to bring us up to what net school spending, uh, the budget amount is provided, you know, the, the state and the Department of Ed um, put out there for us to meet. So we received that supplemental. So he's asking we do the same here. So that $198 million figure that you see, that's what we've developed working off of the governor's budget. Um, what I'm doing right now is balancing off the rest of the budget that we've, um, we've discussed over the past many meetings using our ESSER 1 and ESSER 2 funds and our other uh, funding sources. You know, we have circuit breaker, we have um, some additional Title I. So we will continue with our budget as planned because those sources of funds are already there, they're already approved. Once the final compromise budget comes through and the governor signs it, we can then shift back because we will, my guess is we will increase the um, local funds from 198 million to almost 200 million um, if the Senate is coming in close to the House. So we'll have a, a better handle on that once that passes. But in the meanwhile, we can move forward with our budget. Again, this is the first time in almost 10 years that we're in this situation where we have 
plenty of funds to roll, uh, to fall back on in the event that something were to come up a million dollars short. We have plenty to cover us on that. So, um, like I said, I met with Troy. Um, the, he's, he hasn't finalized the mayor's budget yet. So what we will be doing is, again, reviewing what we've talked about the past many weeks, which is the superintendent's recommended budget. If everything still stands at this point, um, I'll ask that you move that forward as the school committee recommended budget, which I will then prepare a full documentation of everything we've discussed and all our financials. And we'll present that at a public hearing uh, at the next meeting, which is May 18th. And after the public hearing at the school committee meeting, uh, the school committee will then vote to send their budget forward to the mayor, at which point it goes to the mayor, to the CFO. The mayor decides if he can fund it fully or what, what amount he can fund, and then he'll present that to the city council. So. Um, at this point, if there's um, any discussion or any further discussion on the budget, uh, we get into uh, more details on it. Like I said, wherever, wherever you see changes from last week to this week, it's just in going with the governor's budget as opposed to the house budget. Um, so where the adjustments are, right, but we basically took money from other funds, so we didn't change the number of positions, we didn't change any... No, nothing's changed. Programs. We just, we're trying to carry the ESSER funds for two years. Right. We're just changing so, the funding source on exactly, some of it. Hopefully exactly. Hopefully temporarily, but um, we'll find out in well, the coming weeks. If, I think the, the Senate budget is going to look for any amendments by this Friday, which is kind of quick. That being right. said, from what I read from the um, State House News is that it'll then go right into Compromise Committee, and that might come out a little quicker than, than last year. Um, last year it took many, many months. It could come out in a matter of weeks. We could have a budget by the middle of June, which would be perfect for us. Right. If I recall last year, I mean, because everything with COVID, uh, I, I think we were into July before they, the state finally... If I were, if I'm well, they did a one twelfth budget for July. Yep. And then they again right. rolled it forward ninety more days, I think. So they did again one twelfth budgets. Right. It wasn't until the fall, I think, that they really finally had a hard number. That's right. They finally yep. finished their budget. So um, right. at some point, I think late December, we requested our additional ten point two million that we was required to meet net school spending. The mayor added, I think, a hundred thousand to that for student programs. And we received that money through council um, February, March. All right. So this year we can probably have it all done before September. Well, it's great that we are in a position where we basically have a completed budget proposal to look at this evening. The members who have been on for a few years know that this is usually the meeting that we vote on how many people are getting laid off. And so it's nice that we are not voting on that this time, that we actually, instead of voting on how many people we have to lay off to have a balanced budget, we're just at the end with a budget proposal ready. So it's a much different position that we're in. Um, but obviously with the Student Opportun Opportunity Act, there are um, expectations and of course, We've all relayed those in past meetings that, you know, we expect to see results from, you know, uh, the, the different areas that uh, these funds are being allocated to um, in, in student achievement and outcomes. So, um, okay. So we'll open it up to comment and question from the members of the committee. Mrs. Sullivan. Um, I think last year was the first year that we didn't have to lay anybody off. Hmm? We actually, we, I thought we did do we some. Did. We didn't actually do, we don't think we did riffs. I think we did um, blue slips. And right. Paid, yeah. we had to, blue slips where we didn't but we didn't have any no teachers. Right. 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 But we still, yeah, to your point, we, it's a good point, and I, I guess yeah. I kind of misspoke. We didn't lay off last year, but again, we also left positions open, you know. Correct. And, and like you said earlier, um, usually where 
at this point discussing layoffs and as a matter of fact in the prior years we've gone to city council in early June asking them for a, like a pre-approval on our budget so that we could then um, set our, our target of what we had to lay off of who we had to lay off and then hopefully from that point forward be able to recall people before the last day of school so we've right. gone through with the city council and they've been accommodating to us to do that where they basically say we'll give you a straw vote saying that we won't reduce your budget that, that enable us to at least stabilize a little bit so right. this year luckily we don't have to right yeah no it's certainly a better position than we've been in in a very very long time um, any other from the members of the committee <laughs> mark's looking at me i'm just gonna <laughs> I'm sit back at and anybody. enjoy the fruits of our labor right i mean you're right. I'm not used to this position to be in, so I, I'm a happy guy this year. This is this, this is, is when ominous, e people. I, I've always had complaints from school committee and others. Why do other towns set their budget in January and we can't? This is why. Because they know what they got to work with in January and we don't typically. Yes. Right. You know. Um, yeah. Again, they, I, I want to thank. Um, especially, you know, for this year, obviously we've talked about all the people that were involved in the advocacy to make the Student Opportunity Act uh, happen, right down to parents going into Boston um, on buses and, you know, everybody, I mean, we've, we've talked about that uh, in the past, but um, I also, in, in this budget, want to mention our state delegation. Again, they are always fighting and advocating for Brockton every year in every budget, um, you know, to make sure that our our kids are getting what they need and they, they certainly have come through on the Student Opportunity Act and delivered uh, to their districts and um, you know we have a great delegation and, and, and you know really glad to have them as our partners um, so um, so again I appreciate their efforts um, and again as Tom said the fruits of all of our labors Pat, folks who are no longer a part of this committee but but were very instrumental in getting us to being involved in getting us to this point there was a lot that went into this all right if there's no questions or comments oh mayor <laughs> yeah mr d'agostino i just wanted to kind of piggyback that i mean with with claire and jerry and michelle and mike we're very fortunate all four of our delegation members graduated from brockton public schools um and you know they have been advocates for a very long time um we're very fortunate that claire cronin has been elevated to the leader in the house i mean it's just the house speaker and then and then rep leader Cronin um, and so we have uh, a great delegation that's working diligently uh, on that um, and I will say that between you know you and the members of the school committee and the many members of the city council we're all on the same page right we want to continue to advocate the money is here right now much like Tom said you know we can kind of rest uh, but we also know that as Mike said earlier you know there's going to be cloudy days at some point right mm -hmm. so we need to really create that platform and that building block for success now to keep us for the next decade so again we'll just stay the course keep working diligently but this is uh, this is a good time right now yep. okay um, anybody else Ma I mean Ma uh, so um, superintendent <laughs> just to come back um, to the committee because I you uh, approved the uh, 500,000 for additional positions and you know I promise you I'd come back with the recommendations for those um, so the recommendations and I'll go over each one would be an executive director of secondary education which is being done now by the principal of Brockton High School um, and then we would have a director this is a new position a director of professional growth which is PD um, at evaluation and school improvement which is suffering under the current structure and which was strongly recommended in um, our district review. Um, right now we have several people that share in evaluation duties and they do a great job, but it's, it's a huge, and we've talked about this, the valuation piece is a huge piece that is uh, missing a lot um, and um, teaches and just you know, I think people are just so overwhelmed with how much, how many evaluations they have to do, and I just don't think it's conducive to improving instruction because the teachers are just not um, getting the, the feedback that they need, um, and you know they look for this feedback, you know, and they thrive off it, and it's just right now the current system is not working. Uh, so that's another position, um, and then I am recommending a coordinator of TAG. IB and AP that is something that we're looking to expand um, 
We're looking to expand the TAG program across all of our schools um, and uh, provide more access to our students of color into higher level classes. Um, the IB program um, right now is, um, there's no connection between the PLUF uh, in the high school as far as like, this, I'm not, I shouldn't say that way, I'm saying is there's no ninth and 10th grade program. So students come out of the PLUF uh, and then they don't go bit into IB again until the 10th grade. So there's a little disconnect. Um, we're looking to close that gap. Um, we are looking really to grow the TAG program across all schools so students don't have to leave their neighborhood schools to go into um, TAG. We're looking to get more students into AP classes that are currently not in them. And again, this is another product of our district review that we really need to push our students into higher level classes. And then the word coming out of Washington, and, and this is in a stimulus package, but um, the word is a lot more money is gonna be allocated through Title I for universal pre-K. Um, and I know Excellent. Kathy Smith before me has wanted uh, this position, which is an early childhood coordinator. Um, we are growing that in our Student Opportunity Act plan that we are adding uh, several pre-K classes. Um, so this is a job uh, that was eliminated, I wanna say, it, oh, my, I, probably 12 years ago, even longer. Um, but pre-K is the way things are going. I'm almost positive that the Biden administration, um, even if it doesn't go through in a stimulus package, I think they're going to make within the next two years, we'll make pre-K universal. Uh, and I think they'll start doing that through additional Title I funds, even without additional stimulus. There really is gonna be a push for universal pre-K, and I think uh, we need to be ready for it. And I think that's been a priority for a long time, and it was a priority for Superintendent Smith. Unfortunately, she never had the funds to do that. Um, and I just think this is the time, because we need to get really get our four-year-olds into schools, especially now that we changed our, our start date. So those are the four positions I said I would bring to you that, you know, that the 500,000 you put aside and uh, after working with the team um, and talking over the positions that would be needed and that would wrap it up. Great. Mrs. Sullivan. Um, I just have a question on, okay, the TAG program, if that was to go to all the schools and be available. Would that change the criterion for getting into the program because? I think we need to look at the criteria to make it more inclusive. I think um, sometimes we rely too much on um, testing um, and not enough on some of the teacher recommendations. So I think there are kids that don't get into it that we could, we could get in. Uh, I think we could, um, Again, I don't want to look at lowering things, but I think it's just there's kids that are on the edge that don't get in, that I think if they had the opportunity to get into TAG um, and AP classes, that I think they would flourish and do well. And they just don't have, you know, because of our limited budget over the years, we haven't been able to add to it. So I think if we gave more opportunity, I think more students would thrive. Um, and, you know, and again, we could always look at, we looking at the way we get in right now, we use the COGET, which is a test we use um, teacher recommendation, but uh, I like to go off more from teacher's recommendations than I do an exam. You obviously have to use some kind of assessment, but I do like teacher um, recommendations. I take those into consideration more than I would a test. But you're right, it would, it would, you try to get more students in. There are a, stu a lot of students that get on the waiting list that aren't able to get in. Okay, so um, would that cost us more money or would that cost us more? Um, that would, basically you could use teachers that we currently have um, and obviously they would have to be trained um, in PD, but I think we would not have to add a lot of teachers. Um, but again, we'd have to have the program in place and curriculum in place, and um, it would be a training mostly. Because it is a very good program, and it's a very good program that's had a lot of success over the years. Yes, and it gets a lot of uh, parent feedback that's positive. Yeah, and I, and I and I think another thing about this, I think it's going to help us keep kids in the system. I think. Um, the more we can grow it, I, I think it's something that parents really like. The IP program is something that's, you know, uh, very prestigious and it really helps our students and as long as far as AP and TAG. So 
I think it's an advantage to us that this position will pay for itself <laughs> a few times over because I think it's going to keep kids help keep kids here that um, because I think we've always had a great tag and IB program in AP I mean the teachers do a phenomenal job I just think that it's time to grow it and I think it'd be helpful if we could get it back to the four you know all the middle schools so it's not just that one I mean we add it to west south east north uh, Ashfield um, and I think we can grow it in our elementaries and I think it would keep more students here and it would keep kids in their neighborhood schools more because I think that's a tough situation when you're you go to a school K through three and then you get into tag and now you have to go off to a different school and it could be across town and then you have to then go to another middle school from the, the kids you grow up with so I, I think it'd be a benefit Okay, you're right. That, it's a great program, and the, it, and the it is. And it gets. I always hear very positive things on the tag program, the IB program, and, and it, it really parents really love these programs, and they love that their kids are in them. Yep. And so and I, I want to commend the school committee. Um, you, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Minicello, all of you have. You know, remember we were cutting for years, but you've always stuck by our tag and IB program, and they're not cheap. The, t the IB program is not, TAG doesn't cost us anything other than, you know, make sure that we have the teachers for it. But IB is, we, we buy into IB. We pay a fee every year to be part of that program. Um, and you've always committed those funds to that program because it's opportunities for students and continuing to push students to high levels. And these programs have helped our kids get into several Ivy League schools and, and several top-notch colleges, top colleges that not on, on Ivy League schools, but we send our fair share to Ivy League and to top, top schools that, and it's because of these programs. And I think it benefits us to push more of our kids into these programs that, that are not benefiting them from, from them now. Right, and the, also the, um, it leads to the sale of bi-literacy, which is a new yeah. um, seal that students can get upon graduation. And I think they wear a special yes, yep. ribbon and everything. Ribbon, yep. And um, this also would be very recognized by colleges. Um, I, I'm not cre really quite sure. I think it's that they speak fluently in another language. Yeah, usually when you go through the IB program uh, and, and uh, AP, you usually pick up a language. It's e either um, Mandarin Chinese or it's um, Spanish, French. And by the time they leave, leave high school, they're pretty fluent in those languages. And so. Right. And, and actually, this, this coordinator would look to grow that as well, so some of our uh, offerings for our foreign languages. Um, right. Important. I think it's like about four years old, the seal of literacy, maybe three years. I think you're right. I think it's yeah. four, three or four and years. So if a child was to go into TAG, and it really, really wasn't the program for them. Would they be able to? Absolutely. Go back? I mean, I, when I was at the high school as a dean, um, I spent a lot of time with, with students that were really struggling with AP courses. Um, and, you know, they would, you would meet with them and, they, you know, they'd want to come out. And you really have to let them out. I mean, you can't let students struggle social, emotionally. Right. And, so, and struggle through and put that much pressure on. So there's always a way for them to come out. And the issue is because it's so limited, there's students that might not be ready to get into it when they're in the fourth grade, and then they end up not getting into it, but then when they're in the seventh or eighth or even the 10th grade, then, they're not, then they, they kind of get turned off and then never. So I think we need to also have areas where they're able to get in at different points during their, um, their education. Like they can get in when they're in the sixth grade if they weren't in when they were in the fourth grade, or you know they maybe not went in four through eight but are able to get in in ninth or tenth it's just these are the opportunities and the things we have to really look to change to get more kids involved but you're right these programs have been great for our students they've really helped them get on to higher you know really good colleges and you have always supported them even in the very very lean years you continue to support tag ib ap right i think it's great for the kids that really need to be motivated like that because it keeps them positive, it keeps them motivated. They're, you know, always learning and that's never a bad thing. So you, you don't think by making it bigger it would lose the uniqueness of that program? No, I think again it would be, um, no, the uniqueness would have to be the same, the curriculum would have to stay the same. IB, you have to, it's a strict 
curriculum that you have to follow because that's you buy into it. You're a IB um, school member, uh, so you really have to follow that. Otherwise, they can throw you out. Um, they come in and they review um, what we teach, how we teach it. They make sure that we're following the IB curriculum. Same with AP, because the students have to take the AP exams when they when they're in high school. So you have to follow that, um, you know, that very rich, uh, rigid, um, and challenging curriculum for them to be successful and for you to be able to keep your accreditation in those programs. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and, and the other thing I, I just want to jump in quickly that I was glad to hear you say is, uh, you know, I've never been a big fan of how much weight gets put on testing. So that student's performance on that one day, you know, I mean, haven't we all had a bad day, you know, where we didn't perform at our best. So I was glad to hear you say that you're going to give a lot more weight to teacher recommendations who are in class with these kids every single day, see what they're capable of and know what they're capable of. And, and you know, I'm glad that, that we're going to be able to do that, at least with this program. I, I wish we did more of that. Um, and, you know, but again, there's mandates far above my pay grade that, you know, yeah, and, make and, those decisions. And you think <laughs> about the IB program, it, they, they put a lot of emphasis on civic responsibility. Right. Which is great for our kids. I mean, it's, you know, make them productive, uh, caring members of society. Um, yeah. And, you know, shows them the, the importance of service uh, to others uh, and helping and caring for others, which... Again, um, you know, our parents are very supportive of, and, you know, it, the, the IB program spends, puts a lot of weight on that. And I think, it, you know, not only does it make students um, much better academically, but it, it, it works to make them well-rounded as well. Yep. Um, Ms. Asak was next. Um, actually, Mrs. Sullivan had covered some of my questions, but... Um, you know, just speaking from a personal point of view, both my nieces were in the TAG program, and actually uh, my niece Georgina is graduating, and <clears throat> she's, you know, full IB TAG, and it's amazing, and this is what makes our students stand out um, from some of the other schools that don't offer these programs. And I do remember we were, when we were cutting a lot of programs, I advocated with many others we needed to keep the IB program, and obviously... You know, being able to grow the TAG program, space is limited. So there's a lot of students. I believe it was it was a, a small number. I want to say 75 or yeah, it's about or so, 75. Yeah, it was a small number because that's all we could we could handle at the time. So you know, this challenges a lot of the students. And there were so many students that could benefit from this program. We just didn't have the space. So this is wonderful to be able to grow this. It does help them stand out, especially when they're applying for colleges. And uh, I mean, both my nieces took the Mandarin, and you know, my oldest niece in college, she she got to jump, I, I think, skip a year with the Mandarin yeah. because of the Mandarin that she had at Brockton High prepared her, and she was well, you know, more advanced than other students that were just you know starting off with college, um, and they had the Mandarin background. So we definitely have to keep. This is what makes us stand out having these kind of programs that our surrounding towns don't have, and especially the IB program and then the seal of bioliteracy. Um, I know she, she <laughs> forgive me, I, I don't remember offhand, but she received a diploma, and I want to say it was from England. On top of her high school diploma, she got another diploma in the summertime because she, not everyone gets that. You know, they, they have to test to be able to get that, that um, second diploma, which was pretty impressive. So... Again, we're always making our students stand out, so this is wonderful, and I think if we can grow it, there's so many students that really want, want to be in this program, and there just isn't room. So, right. and, and the other thing is, is the parents, you have your kids in one school, so being able to spread it out to the different schools, you don't have to leave your siblings to go. So I remember, like, you know, they'd have to skip yeah. from one school to another, you know. I think it was Angelo, then Pluff. It goes Angelo, Pluff, and then yeah. the other school. Yeah, so... Um, you know, they had to keep switching schools to stay with the TAG program. So being able to have it in more schools will allow them to be able to stay with siblings and, and their, their peers that they've been going to school with. So definitely good choice on that. 
All right. Any other? Anyone else? Well, I know a little bit about tag also, <laughs> since both of my oh. sons were in the program. But I mean, it's a good thing to expand the program. I mean, definitely, because because it is a great uh, curriculum. But you have to understand something: you cannot water down to a level where you're setting up a student for failure. Because you said it, Superintendent Thomas. It is a rigorous curriculum. It requires more homework, more um, effort, not only by the student, but by the parents yep. to support the students because you really have to be involved in terms of providing the students with the, uh, the, 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 the support at home you know, to, to, to follow that path. Um, so I'm all for giving kids more opportunity. That's the best thing in the world and to push students as far as they can go. And the teachers will know in their school which kids can handle, in addition to the testing, you know, who can handle the commitment rigorous. and, 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 and uh, the workload. Basically, it's, it's, it's a rigorous workload. Um, so so there's no, nothing bad in it at all. It's just you don't want to set up a child that cannot handle that. It, it's stressful. It's, it's very stressful. I, I remember some of the, you know, the nights and the projects and all this stuff, it can be very stressful for these kids because it requires so much, so much. and so much time. In addition to kids that are involved with sports and band and yep. this and that and all the other stuff and then having to get these big projects done, you know, you're saying to yourself, wow, this kid's doing this. He should be doing this in high school, but he's doing it, you know, at this lower level. So, yeah, it's great. Right. You, you, but, but the teachers will know who can handle it and they're not going to set these kids up for failure. To, to expand it is a great thing, you know. Yeah, and like to Mrs. Allow, Sullivan you know, said, so they need to So it can't be watered down to a point where it's going to fail because you're saying, well, what the heck's happening? Well, all, all these kids are sort of like, it's now not effective because these kids are uh, not able to, to, right. to keep up. And, and again, there are eyes that overlook, you know, what's going on in the program. So um, Absolutely. Yeah, so so it, it kind of will take care of itself, you know, because the kids are going to say, I don't, I don't want to be, I want to, I want to go back to my regular curriculum. I want to go back. I don't want to be in this program anymore, Ma or Dad or whatever. I can't, I, I can't keep up with the work because they won't be able to keep up with the work oh. if they can't, <laughs> if they can't handle it. I mean, so it's not, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. No. But it's, it, but it's good to give kids the opportunity, and the and the student and the teachers who know that these kids, some of these kids can handle it. I'm all for it. You know, expand it as much as possible, because you always have a number of kids that can't get in. There's Absolutely, always a number, yeah, there's limited always. number of seats. Yep. Bottom line, always was and always, you know, so it's a good thing to expand it. Okay. Any other comment, questions? Going once. Anything else you want to add, Mr. Petronio? Just looking for a motion. I believe Mr. Minicello has that motion prepared. Yes, I will present a motion to accept the superintendent's budget request presented to date and move them forward as the school committee requested budget for the public hearing scheduled for May 18th, 2021, whereby the total net school spending uh, amount of $198,627,523 is requested and in, in terms of total non-net school spending, an even $10 million. That's my motion. All right, we have okay. a motion on the floor. Second. Second. We have a motion on the floor, properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, any discussion on the motion? I'll call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. D'Agostino is a yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Any other business to come before finance this evening? All right. Oh, um, go ahead. Reminder, as you um, look out front, this weekend is the yes. musical um, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, in a rain date of Sunday. Um, I saw it all lit up the TV. other night. Um, it's quite the... They, they did, they put quite the production together and I'm looking forward to seeing it, but the, the lighting that's going on out there and the, the work they did on the stage mm. is, is, is unbelievable. So I look forward to it, it's gonna be great. So I thank this committee because 
you invested a lot of money into this. I mean, that, that stage, um, the outdoor um, stereo system, um, the lighting um, was not cheap, but again, it shows your commitment to, um, to all the extracurricular activities that are done for our students. And I, uh, we appreciate that support, especially um, Sarah Richards, Bob Hogan, um, you know, Matt Cunningham, uh, all the set design, Carol Thomas always helps out. Um, but they really, and they tell me every time I see them to, you know, to thank you for your support because uh, that production is going to be great. But it, again, it wasn't cheap and it shouldn't be and because our kids deserve it, especially after um, two school years of COVID or a year and a half. And, but uh, it's going to be great and the kids are having a great time and they'll never forget this. So I thank you, uh, school committee, for your, uh, your support. Um, and it's going to be a great Three nights, three days, three nights and two days. Excellent. Well, I know I'll be there on Saturday afternoon with my family, and I hope to see everybody there. Let's let's make this a sellout and and show the kids how much their community supports them. Um, they've worked real hard to set everything up out there. It looks amazing, and um, you know, again, with everything that they've lost during COVID, um, it would be great to to see, you know, the the see us at capacity out there um, for every showing so mayor sullivan yeah i just want to uh i mean i'll be there saturday night with my family but i also want to thank the uh, the board of health uh dr eno mondes here and on the school side linda cahill and her team um you know we've been working diligently to make sure that we can do this number one in a safe manner that meets all the protocols uh and last thursday and friday here at brockton high and the red calf and i want to thank dr murray uh and the team here we, uh, we gave vaccine, um, Pfizer vaccines to almost 200 um, students and, and some family members as well, some guardians and parents. Hadn't happened in the Commonwealth at all. Nowhere in Massachusetts did a, did a public school do that, and we started it here. Uh, and I know Mike and, and Mark and I had many, many conversations, and we'll continue it. As you know, next week, the Pfizer is going to be able to be given to 12 and older. So we'll be working diligently to see how we can do that with our middle schools. Uh, to save lives. So again, I want to just thank uh, Dr. Cahill and her team and all the school nurses. They've been awesome since day one uh, and the Board of Health and again, our pandemic consultant who's missing us. Rick Herman said he wants to come back and talk to us soon. But uh, this is going to be a, a good weekend for the drama club and the chorus and the musicians. So kudos, Brockton. Thank you. Mark. And oh, Oh, sorry. So just um, a couple of, couple of things. So as we leave tonight, we're going to have the opportunity to see our seniors out in the parking lot having a movie night. So I wanted to uh, thank Dr. Murray, um, the senior advisors, and, and Mr. Brophy. I've been working directly with Mr. Brophy. So they've planned a few, few um, exciting events for, for the seniors. Um, you know, mm. you can't bring back their proms. We're at a tough situation right now, but they're trying to do some fun things for them in the next few weeks. So tonight, it was supposed to be a couple of weeks ago, and it got postponed to this evening. So for a Tuesday night, they have a pretty good, pretty good group of seniors out there. And um, for anyone that wants to help out, I have actually created a Facebook page. Last year, someone had created a Adopt a Senior, and it was really nice because it brought the community together, and they were just you know, making baskets and giving them to different seniors. Um, so I didn't see any of that going on. So I did reach out to some of our PTA, PTO members. If anyone here wants to help out, it's a lot of work to try to manage that page. Um, but we need to acknowledge our seniors. There's so many amazing kids that, that are graduating this year. And we just want to show them, you know, the community support, um, just reaching out to them. And it was a fun event. So I'm sure a lot of you saw it online last year. You know, strangers stepping up and just adopting a senior, saying, you know what, they made baskets, they, you know, just dropped them off to the students. Um, and it was nice. It was nice that people were getting to meet other people within the community. So we, we've created that. So hopefully within the next couple of days, that'll, you know, we'll get invites out and try to get more activity online. So, um, and I think that's it. I think tonight's the movie night and they have a special field day or something coming up. Field day cookout going on the last week when they're in school. The last day for seniors is May 28th, the Friday before Memorial Day. But uh, I know that uh, Dr. Murray, 
uh, Mr. Brophy. Um, they have worked on getting, um, I think, is Nicole Ontero still out of that? I don't know if she I'm does it sure. anymore. Um, but they have uh, received um, several donations from local restaurants. Um, so they're donating pizzas and chicken um, chicken fingers and fries and tacos. And so uh, several of them are doing that for our seniors. So Definitely. I know they have an event planned uh, socially distanced out in the um, outside at the stadium. So that's during the last week, senior week it's called. So I know that, you know, we can't do a regular senior week, but they are planning that. They're planning some other things for the seniors. And again, as it will top it off with uh, our graduation, which again will be great to have close to a normal graduation but as we celebrate the 50th graduating class from the new quotation Mott's Brockton High School uh, which <laughs> the first graduating class of this building was 1971 uh, it opened in September of 70 and then obviously that class was the class of 71 so it's 50 years um, so um, it will be be a great great day so Excellent. it's actually not bad to celebrate 50 years with two with two graduations that day. Excellent. Yeah. That, well, graduation day is always a wonderful yeah. day, but it'll be even nicer that it's the, the 50th uh, anniversary for Brockton High. Mrs. Sullivan. Um, I just wanted to say, Joyce, that uh, Facebook page is Adopt a Senior, right? I believe Adopt a Senior. I created a new page because the one last year obviously said Adopt a Senior 2020. So I think um, I, I, it's Adopt a Brockton <clears throat> High School Senior and I think I put 2021. So we'll try to share it as much as we can. Yeah, Again, because that was a really great program last year, and a lot of the community got involved with uh, the seniors. So I know it was really successful. Our community just wants to step forward yeah, and absolutely. do something, and, and everybody loves to do things like that. So it gives our community an opportunity to have people step forward. Same with you know anyone that ever wants to, you know, donate or, or volunteer a service that they have. Um, you know, when we have events, it's just, we can always, we can, no, I we, think it's great. We can, we can always use, um, you know, uh, yep. people stepping up and, you know, if they got food trucks or yep. things like that. So again, I think it's, um, the adopt a senior, if we all want to, you're all more than welcome to help out. Um, but I think it'd be, it'd be wonderful. I didn't see anything happen. I think last year it started in April and I'm like, okay, we're in May and I haven't seen anything online. So we just created a few days ago. So we're still putting it together, but people, I think family members or friends will, you know, send in a picture with a little bio on the senior. And then, you know, if someone wants to, you know, adopt them or sponsor them somehow, and then they just flag it. So we have a lot of yeah, seniors. I know, I know they, they got gifts for them and everything and delivered them to their house yeah, and everything. they were wonderful. I mean, I, I actually really adopted, program. um, I think it was Adam Neal. <laughs> he didn't even want to be adopted, but it was wonderful. I adopted him, and I showed up with the basket, and it just, it, it's just the thought, you know, that the students just loved it, that strangers were stepping up to show that, you know, they care. Um, you know, we're going through a pandemic, so, you know, I think it'd be something nice to do year after year, but. Great. You know, and... You mentioned about how the community always stepped up and strangers were stepping up. And I think that's part of what makes Brockton Brockton. And, um, you know, uh, part of what makes Brockton a city we can be proud of. You know, we're a city of over 100,000 people. But some days when things like that happen, you'd think we're a small town and we're all looking out for, you know, taking care of each other. And, and we do that in a, in a good sized city. And I know that, uh, you know, it may, it's part of what makes me proud to serve, and I know that uh, it's the same thing for all of you, part of what makes all of you proud to serve our city. So uh, if there's nothing else, okay. Um, so I'm going to take one more opportunity to wish uh, School Committee Member Rodriguez a happy birthday. I told you I was going to embarrass you again. <laughs> I missed the first opportunity at the first meeting, but um, so uh, happy 43 to Mr. Rodriguez. And um, then, and thank you for spending your birthday with us. Thank right, you. right. It's eighteen with twenty-five years of experience. Oh, it's eighteen with twenty-five years of experience. I got to remember that because I'm only two months behind you. So in July, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> but uh, but no, I appreciate you being here on your on your birthday. I'm sure there's about a bazillion things you would have much rather. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> 
Um, so finally, um, I want to thank um, some people that are in the back making this that make this meeting the, all these meetings happen. I want to make sure we thank Mike, Tracy, Melinda, um, Thomas, and also uh, George, who's not here tonight, but he's the custodian that gets this place ready for us, cleans up after us, often in many meetings is standing downstairs with the door downstairs with the door open, and I assume a smile to greet us with, but he has a mask on. Um, so I want to make sure I thank you know those people that support our meetings and make our meetings happen. Um, yeah, you're all do, you're awesome, and I appreciate that you've all been here since 5:30. I know you're all going. Oh my God, Mark, stop talking. Um, final thing, don't forget the doodle. We got to get that date nailed down for the next. Uh, the next retreat and the completion of our diversity training. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised at the pause on the motion. <laughs> motion to adjourn by Mr. Minicello, seconded by Mr. Rodriguez. I'll call the roll, Mayor Sullivan. Yes. D'Agostino is a yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Thank you, everybody, for all your time this evening. I know it was a long night.